Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to do something a little bit different. I have here a early Xbox 360. It's gone red ring of death um, and it went red ring of death many years ago. However, it's all boxed up with all the original paperwork, the original purchase receipt, all nicely packaged away. Very clean. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart and we're going to try and bring it back to life. So I'm going to unbox the rest of it. Out of here we're going to need the power supply, the power cable and the monitor cable. away. So I'm going to start off by plugging it together. And we will confirm the fault. Okay, there we go, the three flashing lights. So let's take the front off. So we've got the Microsoft seal in place, and uh, I'm trying to convince this to come apart without causing too much damage. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Come on, clip out, stay clipped out. Thank you. There's a few of them in it. I believe at some point there was a specialist tool for doing these from what I remember. But you could press in. There we go. Come on. Pressing in through the sides uh, using a small screwdriver. Okay, that's one side removed. Managed to do it without breaking any tabs. And let's repeat. This one's normally not quite as awkward. Okay. Let's void the warranty. Again, there was a tool for taking these apart. I'm going to use an iPhone SIM remover and just go down and press them. And a little bit of pressure, just press them in. That's where it should release. Hang oh, on, let go. So I'm just going to go down and remove all of the silver screws.
whilst I'm here I'm also going to take these four black, sorry, eight black screws out to hold the X clamps in place. Flip it over. Take the eject button off. Lift up the top. Now for this point, I'm going to take the drive out, which has still got the little bit sticky across the front here. So I'll break that. Shiba drive. Unplug that. Place it to one side. I'm going to go to the front now. Unclip that. And take the three screws out. We draw that, pop this down, and we can get the fan assembly off. Sorry, the cover for the fan assembly off. Now we can take the fan assembly out. We'll clean all of this. Finally, we can lift out the main board. Here we have the original Xbox 360 mainboard. I'm just having a quick glance over it to make sure there's no swollen capacitors and there's not. So we've got to, got to do work on the X clamps. And we're going to use the system where it uses some bolts and some washers, which is what was done back 10, 12 years ago. We're going to take these off. We're going to get the screwdriver under the edge of these. And we need to ping clamps up like that. I'll show you on this one a bit closer. Screwdriver in, lift it up. Let me give the camp a wiggle. So one of these does the graphics processor, one does the main processor. Some people advocate heat flowing them, using a hot air gun on them, heating them up. Um, and what I remember, sometimes you had to do that, sometimes you didn't. Now all I've got here is a bit of isopropyl alcohol in a rag, and I'm just going to clean the top surfaces of these off. So we've got a nice clear surface to start off with. So I'm going to start off by removing the bolts at the bottom of the heat sinks. We'll do the main processor first small amount of heat sink compound on there, we don't want loads and loads of it. I'm going to put through from underneath these four bolts. Now what went on is the original um, clamp assembly didn't hold the heat sinks, enough pressure on. 
to put a washer. Then one metal washer, the plastic washer, metal washer. Then we're going to come in and we're going to bolt this from underneath into place. All I've done is just held the processor in place, the cooler in place. Just want to get these started. You can bang these right up, so I'm just going to get them. a little rattle, and we're going to do exactly the same for the other processor. Plausibly, that's repaired. Next thing to do is to plug it back together and see if it comes to life. Okay, so the reason the drive's on is if you power an Xbox up without the drive on, they can get an Xbox ban. So let's see what we get. Three flashing lights. Okay, what that means is we're going to have to heat them up. Now, there's two ways we can do that. One, we can leave them on without the um, heat sink on. The other one is using a hot air dryer. So what I'm going to do is I've got this set up now without the heat, without the fans blowing over it. I'm just going to leave it for an hour and then we'll see what it does. A little time has passed. What I've done, I've left it turned on for I think about 20 minutes until the fans went on to full speed. And then I've turned it off and I've left it turned off overnight. So now it's had time to go cold and set. So let's see what she does. I haven't even tested this myself. If it doesn't, if it doesn't work, we'll have to get the hairdryer on it. Come on, give me three, two, three, three lights. And it's looking for a controller. There we go, we're on. Connected a screen up to it. Let's give it a try. Brilliant. This has got an early blade dash on it. Um, so the next stage we'll do is we'll fully reassemble this apart from putting the top on and then we'll check it with a game. As we can see there, she's loading up. It's got the, um, the nice early blade dash, which is a little bit of a blast from the past. So what are we going to do now? I've unplugged the power from it and the output. We're going to take the various parts back off here. And we're going to start and we're going to reassemble it. Prior to doing that, I'm just going to grab a paintbrush and just knock the little bit of dust off here and off the fans. Um, and then we'll start putting it back in its case. Before we put the CD drive in, because it was sticking, we're going to fit a new belt on it and hopefully that will make it load and unload properly and um, then as before we put the top on it we'll try a game in it and make sure the drive reads what I'm going to do is I've got a selection of games I want to make sure I've used one that doesn't update the dash on it the first thing we're going to do is take this and place it back into here now we're going to turn it over and reinstate the small screws that go around the outside Want to make sure this goes back into place okay. There's a couple over here. Here. Two on the side.
and three across the front. Flip this round. So we've got three screws to go in here. Clip this back onto here. It will only go in one way. If you put it the wrong way round, the button won't work. The next step is to reinstate the fan. There's a couple of tags down the bottom here, go into these two holes here, and then it pushes back into place. And we plug the supply in. Then you're going to get this here, which is the trim that goes into the back here and just clips into place. So I'm going to put this to one side for a moment and we'll take the CD drive apart and replace the belt. First job is to take the four screws out. there that's uh, fighting the cause. There we go. Get a bit of uh, plastic off here and we can lift this out. And there's the inside. And turn this over and we're going to get the plastic part to separate from the metal part. It's quite clean inside um, so we need to open it up in here is a cog that we've got to turn. We turn this, the drawer will open. Now the drawer's part open, we can see where the belt is in this. We're just going to lift it off and put it out of the way. I have here some belts that I've had from back in the day when I used to repair these with the Red Ring of Death and um, flash the drives etc. I would assume that they're still available. Just knock any dust out and now we can see that when we're moving that it is making that uh, motor drive move straight away. I'm not going to worry about latching that back in. It'll do it as soon as I power up. Place this back onto here. Flip over. reinstall the base. Our base is back in, so we'll pop the screws back in. Do opposites again, just for good measures.
console back and you plug the two cables in here. I tend to find plugging the, the power and control cable in first and then the SATA cable separate works. We'll put this back in place here. It just clips in and that is the Xbox 360 back together internally. So, I'm going to put the, the top on. When we put the top on, we want to make sure that this piece of plastic here goes underneath here and that this piece of plastic here goes underneath here. Turn that back upside down. And we're going to put the six fixings back in. There we have it. So that's the inside of the Xbox back together. We've still got to put the plastic trim on the bottom and the sides, but before we do that, we're going to do a play test. We're going to put a game in it, make sure it loads the game, and um, just check it works okay. My monitor's being a bit of an idiot. But we can see there that we've got the game. We'll close the tray. Read the game. And there we are, it's loading. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a controller. I'm going to put the rest of it back together. We'll get a controller and we'll capture directly from it so we can actually see the dash panel. So we've tested, it works. The next stage is to put the remaining panels back on. Just clips in. Front. and when it goes in the back you've got to sort of make sure it goes over and under and over and under all back together ends literally push into place And the final piece would be to put that in. Fortunately, you can um, undo your mess ups. going to uh, release a couple of these tabs on here and then it will allow me to open it far enough to get my fingers in. <laughs> like that. And we put that in place there. Clip it back in, clip them back in place, and then we put the front on. And that is the Xbox 360 reassembled. Here we have the blade, the blade dash with a live setting, one for media, one for system, one for console, console settings. Everything you would see in the, um, the old one. So what we'll do now, we're going to launch this game, which is, I think, Paradise City Burnout Revenge. Now, I've not got the sound connected because I don't really want to play the game of copyright. Yeah. Obviously, the monitor's decided to uh, get 
give you some further information. We are in the UK. And there we go. Burnout Revenge playing on this Xbox at the beginning of this video was not usable because it had failed and had got a bed ring of death. But uh, as you can see, there's absolutely no um, no issues here as far as it working. So there we go. Let's just go. back to Xbox Home. Yep. There we go, back to the dash. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I've hoped you've enjoyed um, seeing us bringing an Xbox back from the dead and um, having a little bit of a blast from the past with this dash which I believe went away in 2008, 2009, somewhere around that they replaced it. I, I can't remember, but it seems to be many years since I've seen this. So um, there we go. Have a look at some of the other videos and um, enjoy. Thank you.